goal was really to make printing very easy and productive, but we encountered several problems. We really wanted to make um, 3D printing a bit like 2D printing in terms of having plug and play and, and ease of use, but there's no PDF for 3D printing and uh, we're still working on the plug and play part. Um, so we started to looking at what are the file formats we can use in order to uh, make 3D printing more productive for users. And so we looked at the existing ones. STL, of course, is very commonly used, but it's really lacking in a lot of information. It does not include information about color. And as you saw earlier today, there's a lot of technology coming in these printers and we need a rich file format that can support the type of technology that these printers will support. Um, we looked at AMF, for example. Um, it's, a, it's a good format, but it has, it's, it's complex to implement. And we wanted to be very pragmatic and make something that was simple for people to use and to implement, both in their applications and in their devices. There's a number of CAD formats. They tend to have a very high implementation cost. And then there are other formats like OBJ, which are great for rendering, but they include concepts like lighting, which are just not relevant for manufacturing. And so our conclusion was that there isn't really a format that is, is truly intended to do a great job um, at um, being a format for 3D printing. So I went out, one of the things I get to do in my job is I get out, go out and talk to other people in the industry and I spent some time, I, um, I went and talked to Alex about what he thought about how we could solve this problem. I went and talked to a number of other companies and I discovered that hey, pretty much everyone agrees that this is a problem. Everyone, it was, it was amazing actually. Um, everyone agreed that we needed to have a common solution that we could all, um, that we could all use. Now at the same time, um, at Microsoft we had a research team that was working on a format called 3MF, which did actually seem to be a reasonably good solution to the problem. Um, I actually took the decision to, um, to donate uh, the 3MF format from Microsoft to the consortium that we, we decided to put together. Now if any of you have ever tried to build a, an industry team to work on a piece of technology, heck, if you've even tried to build a team within your own company to work on a larger project, you'll know that it takes a lot of time and effort and it, and it can be very difficult. So let me just give you some background on how, how, um, how important this problem was to the people that we were working with. So I mentioned I was talking to Alex about this problem. That was back in October or November of last year. And so we agreed to go ahead and try to, to get some industry people together to solve this problem. And I essentially started meeting with companies in December of last year. And so from December of last year, we got to April 30th of this year. We had a consortium formed. We had version 1.0 of the specification released. And we had open source up and available uh, for people to download and use to implement in their products. So clearly there was a huge need and I think that with 3MF, we just, hit, we just hit the right solution to the need that everyone has in the industry to have a, a great solution. When we were building 3MF, there were some important design considerations that we, that we really had to, had to think about. And I'm, I'm going to use the word pragmatic a lot. I, I'm a pragmatic person. Um, I really try to um, influence the consortium to be pragmatic in how they thought about the technology. I'm probably going to say pragmatic at least four or five more times. Um, so we want the model, we want 3MF to be a complete definition of the model that's going to be printed. We don't want to have to have you add an additional file to provide a texture or other information to, to print the model. So it should be complete and represent the model. Um, it should use well understood standards where that's possible. We don't want to have to invent something if there's something good that already exists. Um, OPC, Open Packaging Conventions, are, are good enough to describe um, how the file is laid down on the disk. Um, the file itself is actually, if you take a .3MF file and you change the suffix from 3MF to .zip, you can put it on your desktop and you can open it up and you can inspect it. And that's another aspect that we format was that it's easy to work with and easy to use. So we use XML inside the file format so you can, um, you know, if you're a developer, you can open it up and you can see what's going on in there relatively easily. And um, as I say, we use zip so you can open it up and see that stuff. So we do, our goal is really, we want to try to follow an 80-20 rule here. We want to do enough so that we support the vast, the majority of what people want to do with 3D printing. And we don't want to have to explode the, the things we support in the format to support the other 20% of things. So, um, but we do want to, we want to be able to support those in a way. And so what we've done is um, 
we've made it extensible. So if you support the core specification, then you support 3MF, and it's really straightforward. It's a, it's a short spec. Alex will tell you how many pages it is exactly. I'll leave that up to him. It's, it's relatively straightforward to implement. And if you do that, you support 3MF, whether it's in your application or your, or your device or your service. And then you can interoperate with all of the other applications and things that are out there that support 3MF. If you've got a specific need for something extra, the 20%, then we have a well-defined way to provide an extension. And so the work to, to support the core specification is done. As I said, April 30th, you can download the spec and you can implement it today. If there are spe specific needs for additional features, then we do that through an extension mechanism, which implementers are not obliged to actually develop to support 3MF. And so we f finally, we follow um, specific de design approaches in those specifications to, to be unambiguous and straightforward. So that if you're a developer and you're supporting 3MF, and then you want to support a particular um, extension, then it feels the same to you. So there's not another learning curve for you to go ahead and, and figure out how to support that extension. So if the benefit to the ecosystem is, is, is uh, straightforward. It's the, um, it's the ability for our, our users to use one format from the point where they're at creation to the point where they are uh, uh, pr uh, printing, creating the, the physical object. Um, it eliminates things like file conversions in the middle because you need to convert something to an OBJ because you want to send it to a print service and so forth. That will all go away in the future. I want to reiterate that anyone can implement 3MF today. And I'll point out that as of um, a couple of weeks ago, we have actually more than 75 million Windows 10 installations out there that support 3MF natively in the operating system. And I saw a news article today with a larger number, which I can't confirm or deny, but you may want to look that up. But um, I'll, I'll confirm the 75 million installations number. So think of that in terms of the number of people are out there who have the ability to look at 3MF. The file, file explorer will show you a thumbnail icon of the, of the, of the 3D file. So you, you get that sort of, um, that, that much better experience of working with 3D images in your operating system. So the members of the 3MF consortium are really um, dedicated and committed to driving the success of 3MF in the, in the industry. Um, you can assume that, that all of the members are working on implementations, and our goal is to make this file format be ubiquitous and to get away from the problems that we've had so far uh, using file formats that were not uh, specifically designed to meet the needs of modern 3D printers. And I would like to take a moment just to publicly recognize and thank all of the companies that are in the consortium for all of their hard work. Those companies have dedicated enormous time and resources to um, getting the file format to where it is at this point, and they've, de they've devoted a lot of time and resources to developing products that will, that will generate this file format or consume it, and that will ultimately benefit all of us that are in this industry. And so they've done a great job and a lot of work, and I'd like to say thank you to them. So I'm going to hand over to Alex. Thank you. So, so thank you. Um, I have to add, when Adrian called us at NetFab that, to work on Windows, um, this was a very interesting experience to get the call, and we were very happy to take the call. And um, actually, the call, so we have been in contact for a longer time in, in terms of before, before we started the 3MF consortium initiative. And when somebody, when somebody, um, showed me the first spec of the 3MF spec, which was kind of like uh, created in 2011 or 2012. I was really amazed. I have never seen anything like this in the 3D space before. It was so clear and technically brilliant. And I've, uh, later I found out that the guy who wrote the spec was the same guy who wrote the spec of the DOCX format and the XPS format and all these Microsoft formats. And if you just read, through a, uh, read a, a few pages of it, uh, you really, um, you really feel that this spec has been designed by somebody who really knows how to write specs. So this is this is where we started, and and when we looked at it, um, we evolved a lot from that because we looked at specific use cases, and we of course could not cover all the use cases that are there in the 3D printing space. But it was clear that there is not a single use case uh, that uh, that can be that has to be addressed to be a unique. A format just because the, the, the ranges, the commercial ranges of the printers and the commercial ranges of the industrial applications are so so wide and so so moving and so transforming every week and every day 
that this is very difficult. So I just want to, to summarize a few things that we thought about. And if somebody has some more suggestions, we are very open. Everybody can, can, can join and give input what we should consider in the, in the consortium. So the first thing is, and that's also from the end that Microsoft came into this. Microsoft wanted to make it a good desktop pipeline. That means the desktop users have a, a nice CAD to print experience uh, with all the formats included. That's also why PDF and XPF is, uh, is so much integrated in the Windows platform. And all these file conversion issues and repair need and all these uh, little bits that block a good user experience in the desktop space are uh, go away. But I want to emphasize that 3MF is not targeted at this group only. This is often a misunderstanding. It's targeted at a much wider range. And the second range is that people who do not have printers, which is still the majority of the 75 million, um, but they today have access to print service users like Shapeways, like iMaterialize, like others um, that, that want to design um, that want to design parts and then get them delivered to your home. And I have also done that, and I have worked with Shapeways a lot to get their print pipeline uh, working. And with, with, with formats like OBJ and VRML, we always had these problems. For example, if you have, if you have a, a sphere and have a, right a red light lighting on the sphere, the sphere is red. But the sphere itself is white. So if you upload that, it's very difficult to say if that sphere should be delivered or printed in red or in white. And all these kind of misunderstandings that the file formats bring um, are addressed in the format, and also these kind of things that you have upload checks and different, uh, different gateways in the, um, in the tool chains, that is addressed and should go away. Um, I don't know if anybody knows NetFab or knows the background of NetFab, but we're a, a spin-off uh, company of a, of a large industrial service bureau in Germany. And we have a lot of industrial uh, customers like um, like car companies and, and um, professional users, design bureaus that, that need for prototyping. And they have a, a wholly different use and mindset as consumers. They want to have, they want to specify build assemblies. They want to have special extensions for special um, printing technologies. They want to specify tolerances and all these kinds of things that are important to them to get their, their whole development running. Um, and if you look at it, into industrial users, I think we have the first talks today have shown a lot in the hearing aid market, in the dental market. Um, the requirements are also very different. Like you have to have a connection to PLM system, you have to have signatures, you have to have content protection, all these kinds of, of additions that you do not need in the desktop world. And, and all these together, I think with our extension model, we can address each of these use cases with a very specific, um, approach without creating a 2,000 pages document uh, that will just prevent people from adopting the format. In order to pe get people adopt the format, um, we have created a GitHub page. And I'm very grateful to Microsoft that, uh, how do I say that, um, that the, the new wind that's coming from Microsoft is very open and very open source. So they we are very grateful that they're they're uh, they made the code just available to everyone and not in a way that you have signed 20 NDAs and have to sell your soul to get it. But it's really open source in a BSD way. Um, that means you can just take it from GitHub. You can use it in commercial applications. You can make your app working with it without having to fear any lawyers or what what these large corporations come after you. So it's really open. And this is also the, um, the, 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 the thinking of, of this consortium, that it's not an exclusive club, but really an open development that just solves industry needs. And that's the core. And, and that was the only reason why we could assemble this consortium this quickly, because it just was, uh, it just hit. It hit the pain from a lot of applications and companies at different levels. So if you go to GitHub, you can download the C++ code that, um, that you can just take and integrate is one, in one day in your application and support it, either on Windows or now we have also a Linux version and a and Mac OS version that, uh, that we supply, uh, that we um, 
can support all available platforms. There's also examples in documentations, and of course, um, um, so code examples and, and, and file examples, of course, just to make people adopt it. Um, contributions are, of course, very, very welcome, because even if there are large companies backing it, um, it's very hard to cover all the different use cases, and that means uh, if it's input, or if it's code, or if it's uh, um, um, any other form of criticism, we are very happy if you receive it. For the technical details, I just will take two minutes. So we have not reinvented the wheel. It's very important. We uh, did not want to do any fancy academic um, plays in the background that would be cool, but we really focused on things that are necessary and that are there at the moment. So we still have a triangulated format, um, but we but the, the, defen the, the defects of SDLs are very wide. And at NetFab, we have kind of like 10 years of bad experience in how, what, what comes with the deficiencies of, of SDL. And, and there are a few um, that we addressed. One is that we enforce the files to be manifold and in a way that it's very easy to check. It's like 30 lines of code to check, um, to check the manifoldness of a part. We also have example code, and we also have the library can check this. Um, then also things like Mebius bands and, and Klein bottles and all these uh, problematic uh, cases we exclude and we can really um, we can really uh, ensure that the files are printable in this way and this problem goes away when you use StreamF. In addition to having one part representing one part, we have um, the possibility to represent the full scene. That means if you have a tray of objects, um, then you can represent that in the file format. And it, you can represent it in a way that uh, um, it's not like merged together, but you really can select each file. And you have name for each file. You have properties for each part that is on the platform. And of course, if you print one part 10 times, the data is not there 10 times, but only one, one time. The first extension we uh, published, we have a few more in the works. but. Um, we want to have implementations ready before we release them, um, is the materials and textures extension, which basically uh, wraps up all the colors and materials um, that are needed for 3D printing on the surface. That means like, uh, like or the base material, and like uh, colors on a triangle level, or a node level, or texture bitmaps. And also for like, like things like object machines that you have composite materials. That means you can mix mix uh, two materials like uh, um, print grayscale parts and things like this. And then we have something called multi-channel. That was because we heard the HP keynote. HP was very pushing for uh, that you can have multiple channels of materials. That you can say, I want to save a base material. I want to have this color. And I want to have a connectivity channel that, says th that tells you the connectivity of the part. And this is very important for future developments of the phone. So how to use StreamF? One thing is, of course, give feedback for future extensions or whatever. I also want to highlight that the extension model is not something that is imposed by the consortium. But there's a way to make private extensions that are fully backwards compatible um, to, to, the, uh, to any other application that processes StreamF. So if you have a specific workflow or implementation, then you can just keep, uh, keep the information throughout the workflow with your private information. And do not have to wait for the consortium to just, just uh, su support your uh, vertical. And so if you're an app developer, we are very happy if you support StreamF, and not only SDL. It's very easy to integrate with open source. Print and manufacture the same. It's also very easy to use uh, and to implement on any type of printer, depending if, the, if it's desktop or industrial. It's not. We really want to support. We want to ha have every printer supported. And if you're a user, just ask your suppliers to support StreamF. You will be very happy about this. So just as a summary, or I'm over time, so I won't summarize more than um, the StreamF consortium is very happy for everybody who wants to support the format in the future. Thank you.